Hi everyone, Dan from Insane Forensics here. Welcome to a special edition of Tech Talk Tuesday. We know it's not Tuesday today, but we wanted to get this out um, in order to help the community. Today, what we're going to be doing is going through how to build a threat hunt from um, Threat Intel, um, specifically for how to threat hunt for nation state actors. Um, today, we're going to share a behind the scenes view of how we do this um, to demystify and hopefully help if you're trying to do this, help demystify and help you find actionable things to improve your threat hunting program. So generally with this, you're going to start with that threat intel report, right? And about two weeks ago, um, CISA, so DHS, released a report on nation state actors against uh, U.S. defense. Um, and this report did have a lot of recommendations, and some of the recommendations were immediately useful. But when you look at it, too, there's a lot of other recommendations and things you can do when you're actually threat hunting for this. So we're going to start with this report, and we're going to show you how we build off of this report to get to that actionable threat hunt. So this is our starting point. You know, what we immediately do, the text is small. I know the intent's not for you to read it. The intent is when we start with these reports and when we start chasing these groups, what we do is we whiteboard out the reported TTP details. So we use Miro. This is an example with Miro. Miro's, they do have free accounts, so you don't have to pay also to use Miro. Um, but what we do with Miro is whiteboard out different sections of that report. In this case, this is specific sentences from the report straight out of it on what the attacker was observed doing. What we then try to do is chain these together. So again, we don't know the timeline. We don't know the sequence. Um, but what this can do is kind of help us try to get to a sequence um, that we might use. But really, the important thing here is to capture some of the atomic events or behaviors or tactics that the um, attacker used during this. So again, first step out, take the report, whiteboard it out. We take then, so what we'll do then is take that initial layer of, hey, I have a sentence from the report and get it to a more succinct, um, detailed kind of technical um, description that we can then build further off of. So in this case, we took a long sentence and we said, okay, this sentence is basically brute forcing the domain um, in the Microsoft 365 account or things like, okay, this sentence is literally just saying they were shortened URLs and emails. Um, and this can be down to, depending on the specificity of the report, um, and even if you're working across multiple reports, um, you, know, you could have very technical things in here and you could have very kind of wide generic things. So you know, a very t technical thing here would be the ntds.dit, one way of credential harvesting that red teamers, in, a, in this case, the attacker used. Um, to where wider things you might have, right? A more generic behavioral description of what's going on. Um, so again, we take that, again, this is that second stage of, we started with the report, we started with the big sentences, now we're breaking it further down into things that we can see. As we build these out, once we have this, um, we'll then take that graph, take that whiteboard, and under that whiteboard, you start to see the blue sticky notes. The blue sticky notes are those host and network observables that we're going to look for in the threat hunt, right? So in this case, when you're talking about emails with shortened URL, you might in your network traffic have HTTP and DNS. You might also have this in your host traffic if your Windows firewall saw it, um, or if you have other network appliances, proxies, you know, there's a bunch of um, both network and host things, you'll see this through. Another way you could do it, obviously, is if you're doing mailbox analysis or even PST analysis. Um, so there's Python tools also out there. You can automate some of this out to dig through PSTs. But as an example, you can then take that bullet and, okay, now we have at least three ways of, you know, kind of looking for this. Um, you know, we might not we might pull all shortened URLs out and then have to spend some time manually seeing, okay, well, these are the good shortened links versus these shortened links take a little work. Um, but this, again, off of that one thread gives you something to start with. If you dig deeper in, another one is like the ntds.dit credential harvesting. Um, that one might be new to you. So let me show you how to break that down so that it's not like, so you know actually where to start on that. You can use the MITRE ATT&CK site on this. So again, this is where MITRE ATT&CK is a very powerful tool um, and resource for you as a threat hunter when you're looking for this. 
Miter Attack has a pretty good page on NTDS, and they outline four ways um, that this happens. Two of the ways, so NTDS, for those not aware, NTDS is the Active Directory's database. It's where all your user accounts, passwords, groups, um, it's one of the um, databases that's central to Active Directory. Um, this file is not generally accessible while the system's running, so the attacker generally, you know, he, he or she or they have to do certain things to actually get to that database. So what we're seeing here then is, okay, well, what is the path um, or what are the paths? What are those limited kind of choke points I can watch for on someone doing NTDS? And in this case, we have three that are modeled out there. You have one through NTDS, DS util. Again, this attacker in this specific report, they didn't have to drop tools. They didn't have custom malware. They were using things built into Windows. Um, so there's a utility where they can just basically dump the database out. Um, what's nice is some of the red teaming blogs and some of the approaches you see, it shows in PowerShell logs. Um, it'll also show in like directory service events um, and how we know this and how we got to this. We didn't know this um, necessarily when, you know, when we did our first hunt on NTDS. But what we did is we built a system. We tried some of the things we built out. You know, hey, this is what happens when you run this utility to know, hey, when you run ntdsutil.exe, if you go into the directory service event logs, you see disk defragmentations before it backs out. You see backups. The advantage for you as a defender is a lot of attackers are not going to think about these. So as a defender, when you're threat hunting, these are a huge advantage. Um, and this is where kind of this starting high and breaking it down and looking for those choke points we can find those indicators that really matter. Um, other approaches, so like I said, we were three here. There's the shadow copy one. So again, because they can't get to it live, they'll actually do a shadow copy versus disk shadow.exe. Again, that might be something you see in PowerShell. There's other really weird things you see with this, like uh, you know, sometimes drives will mount and unmount. Um, so there's a lot of OS level behavior you can see as well as hopefully if you have a EDR in the environment, um, in top, or endpoint detection and response, um, or AV, you might see some of this if it pops in the behavioral alerts. Um, finally, those two were kind of on the host, so if an attacker has access to the host, if you're going with the Kali option for this, um, you might see someone use like impacted secrets dump. So in the case of this advisory that says uh, um, an NSA talked about a little bit, was um, the attacker had credentials because earlier in the attack, one of the first things they do is brute force for credentials. So even if they use kind of the Kali approach of the impact at secret stump, um, you see the SMB authentication. And so when you run impact at secret stump, you actually see the privileged account authenticate with the domain controller itself. If that's coming from you know, Bob and HR's box, that's certainly something while you're threat hunting, you're going to look at and say, hey, why did Bob's, you know, Bob in HR, why did he use a privileged connection over SMB to my domain controller um, to dump the secrets? Um, this will show in some of the well-known event logs, so like the security, the 4624. Um, also again, in the directory service, when, you know, when these tools are actually querying the domain controller and asking for these, the OS is often saying, hey, you know, or the OS is often logging like, hey, you know, someone's, someone's asking for privileged access. So someone's querying this part of Active Directory. Um, those are all things to know. A point to know on this when I talk about the SMB off is this is where you really need to understand your limits to defensive capabilities. Like I said, you see the SMB off with impact at secret stump you do not see the contents of the SMB3 traffic um, generally going across. So again, if you're using just network monitoring to do this, you need to understand that you are just going to see the um, auth up front. This again, you know, and I know I spent a lot of time in here, um, but this again, the point of this was to show that, again, we can start from that very generic paragraph, get down to kind of a succinct technical detail and then begin to look for those choke points to split out and say, okay, what are the technical indicators? What are those observables that I might see from the report beyond just IP addresses and um, hashes and other things that go awry? Because in this case, there aren't ones, it's behavioral. What are those behavioral indicators that I can actually see as I'm looking for this? 
So that's the process. And again, I want to point out that the goal of this talk is to give you a process, right? The tools and techniques an attacker uses are going to be unique per attack, right? Something we have to deal with as defenders is there is no one way that the attacker is going to attack. Generally, every attack is its own set of permutations. Um, but to be actionable with this, so what data supports this hunt? I, you know, in my side, this is what I'm asking clients for when I'm doing threat hunts similar to this in their network. Um, upfront, you cannot be scared of data because more data will help you get around if the attacker is doing something with anti-forensics um, or if they're smart with OPSEC. If they think they're being tricky, um, they might not be. They might not know all of the things that Active Directory is logging into, but the data that we go to, domain controller event logs, you know, please, please, please look at that as if it's a domain controller, especially for the CISA report. Um, beyond that, host event logs, right? So the event logs that are on your domain controller, what's getting logged into there is going to have a different aperture than sometimes what's on the host and vice versa. You might see thing in one that you don't see in the other. Um, cloud service event logs, right? This is where you need to bring people in that understand um, auditing of AWS, auditing of Azure and of the other service. Um, raw and analyzed network traffic. And again, like I said, understanding in that case, you need to understand like, okay, well, if the attacker performs this, will I actually see it? And what will I see, right? Because in the case of the impact at dump secrets, you're just going to see the SMB auth if you're just looking at the network. Um, and ultimately, the other one, if you have the scale to do this, and we like this because we actually have the scale to do this, is disk and memory images. Um, because, you know, again, if you, can, if you can get over that raw image efficiently, it's going to give you a lot of power of things to look for. Um, across these two data and opportunities, you can use Yara things like Yara rules, right? You can use Yara against you know, files dumped out of PCAPs. You can use Yara rules. You can walk an entire disk and use Yara rules against a disk image. So be creative and think of what data you have. You're going to have constraints, you know, whether you're doing this on a consulting side and a client doesn't want to share or can't share the data with you or doesn't have the data. Um, all three happen, right? Um, you know, you're going to have to be creative as your threat on. You're going to have to adapt and overcome as you do it. So in process, or in summary, the process that we followed, right? So we began by whiteboarding it out from the TTP details in the report. We went from those details down to the succinct one and we started to get those observables. When we weren't sure, when we wanted to build out one of those specific uh, kind of stickies as we saw it, you know, we used MITRE ATT&CK to say, okay, this is one technique. MITRE ATT&CK's not the other only technique, let me say. There's also a lot of great blogs um, for a lot of malware and a lot of great blogs and companies that put blogs out also on other indicators and other behaviors to look for with these actors. Understand the limits to your defensive capabilities, right? The SMB3 only seeing the off, um, you know, and then more data, realize that more data, you don't want to drown yourself, but more data is going to help you with, you know, if anti forensics and attack or OPSEC countermeasures are in place, because um, again, you know, just as defenders aren't perfect, attackers aren't perfect either. And that includes tools. So again, it's not just about the details of TTPs today. I hope you leave this talk, not just understanding the specifics of this report, but having a repeatable process that you can use um, regardless of who the actor is or how deep you wanna go with this. Um, protecting against nation states today you don't necessarily need an outside vendor. I want to encourage you that you probably have the data. You might not have the time, but you probably have the data. Um, and there's a lot you can do with what you have. So don't feel pressured to bring an outsider in um, if you can improve yourself in there. Um, the other thing that I want to point out is nation state attackers, and that was kind of the focus of today, they can only hide from us as defenders. The power is in our hands. Like I said, there's only so many things they can do and they cannot cover their tracks. And so the power is in our hands. And so what I wanna offer up today, there's a Miro board link here, will be also be on LinkedIn and Twitter um, probably the next few days under this. We also have people helping us with this. The Miro board is the board that I showed you before. We're going to keep continuing to build that out. Um, that's accessible, everyone should be able to see it. Um, 
But I want to encourage people also on LinkedIn and Twitter today under the threat hunting hashtag. Um, let's collaborate on this. Let's talk about what else we see. Because again, the collective power of us as defenders is larger even than with you know a nation state attacker with a crazy budget, crazy number of people. We will always outnumber of them. And together, our budget will also always be bigger than them. So our collective knowledge can um, make us capable of actually out, outpacing, outfinding, and you know, ultimately shutting down a lot of the operations they do. So again, we'll be on social media. Hope you chip in some on this today, or even if it's sharing your sharing your thoughts, sharing experience. Um, but please, 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 there's a lot of power in us as a community. So again, keep in touch. Um, thanks again um, for attending. I know this was a special version, uh, but thanks and uh, keep in touch. Let us know if there's anything we can do. Thanks.